Welcome to my video. This is Ekajin, the mission for today is Mizuki Cerulea Arbor, featuring the second boss stage, Fate's Favorite Child. I will offer tips and general guidelines on how to complete this stage. Before we start, some artifact suggestions. Anything in general that boosts your stats, such as attack, attack speed, SP regen, etc., those are nice to have. Enemy debuffs like defense and res reduction are great to have. There is a unique artifact for this boss. We don't have it, but it's called the Knight's Corpus, which reduces the boss's defense by 80%. It has 4k defense, by the way. Strongly recommend you have this, otherwise you have to rely on arts damage and true damage. Okay, how to unlock the second ending. As with all other endings, spam encounters. You're looking for the encounter called Delusions of Lunacy. This encounter is required to unlock the specific ending. Afterwards, I suggest you continue to go for the encounter nodes. If you're lucky, you'll find one called Knight Persist, which gives you the Knight's Corpus Artifact, reducing the boss's defense by 80%. Squad Composition. GG will be our main source of DPS, along with Irene. If you have a lane holder such as Thorns, recommended for the wave control. Bring lots of stuns, any kind of stun you can get your hands on. Gnosis and Lee are also amazing to have for this stage. Therapeutic medics are a high priority, and wandering medics are nice to have. If you are lacking on the medical department, it's going to bite you in the ass because this boss inflicts frozen status non-stop. Chen Hollanday, Thorns, Solrash, Mjolnar, Aya S3, Passenger, etc. They do well here to clean up mobs and contribute to boss DPS. And here's how it was done. You do get a bit of time to generate DP, so you can start with Myrtle. We'll place Cliff Heart here for the stun, otherwise that's a prime spot for Thorns. Set up a Medic up top, Wandering or Therapeutic. Buffs are optional. GG will be our main DPS. Focus on arts damage. That's why we have click. Plus, she can stun. And then we'll use GG to clear out enemies as quickly as possible. Use Truce to help her out. Secondary Medic. Remember you want Wandering Medics and especially Therapeutic Medics. more stuns you can bring, the better. Like I said before, Gnosis and Lee are amazing for the stage. So here's the boss. He has to break through three bricks before he gets to us. So go ahead, start stunning him if you can. I recommend you put it on one time speed so you can focus on stun locking the boss and damaging it. True damage is also your best friend. So if you have Caster and Mia invested, I would definitely bring her on S3. And this is where therapeutic medics play an important role. As the boss gets closer, we get inflicted by frozen status. So build your medics. Here, 
See the light of my lantern? I'm right here. Here, the amateurs are doomed to fall to their death. Second phase starts as soon as the boss goes down. He does have two lives. Over here for the silver So make sure your skills are all ready before the boss comes back. All right, so phase two, wave two. He last night regenerates a little bit of HP. He becomes a rider of Rohan and is basically unblockable, but you can still stun him or freeze him. So this is where you want to save any big damage skills, to finish him off. Use the dice. Slow enemy movement. Unleash hell. Activate all the skills. Keep stunning him. Stun locking him. EPS him hard. if you have some sort of AoE or burst skill for the final wave because there are a lot of enemies. But hey, GG comes through with that clutch. And there we go. That's how I cleared Faith's favorite child. Check out the links below for more IS3 guides. As always, my social links will be in the video description. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Peace out.